<sighs> How's it going, people? Doing pretty good. I'm up on Mount Hope visiting Mom. And I found a tract to share with you folks. Signs of the Times. How to Pray. This is Pocket Signs from the Seventh-day Adventists. My mom's not a Seventh-day Adventist, but she likes all this fine reading material. Me too. Different reasons. Okay, so let's find out how to pray. Because I'm here to help. What does it mean to pray? Are people who pray talking to the air? No, they're talking to themselves. Um, is prayer something you do in a crisis? One of the best definitions of prayer is that it is talking to God the way you talk to a friend, an imaginary friend. Of course, to do that, you have to think of God as a friend. He's just invisible, but he's your friend. <laughs> yeah. And... For some people, that's tough, because they think he's angry with them for all the wrong things they've done. And the rest of it's tough, because we just don't think he exists. <sighs> Fortunately, this is not a reason to avoid praying. While God may not approve of everything you've done, ask yourself if parents reject their children just because they've disobeyed. They do sometimes especially religious-hearted parents. Uh, of course they don't, all right. Except they do sometimes. Uh, neither does God. I mean, except for that little drowning the planet bit and damning people and creating hell and stuff like that. You know, otherwise, of course not. Um... And his inability to forgive without blood atonement. Uh, even if you've done something he wishes you hadn't, he still loves you. Your imaginary friend. He's there for you. How to pray. There we go. Most of us think of praying as something we do on our knees with our eyes shut. But... That's far from being the only way to pray. Pray tell. Some people prefer to pray sitting down. Others like to pray lying in bed before they get up in the morning or after they lie down to sleep at night. And while it's probably the exception, some people actually prefer to pray with their eyes open. Some people like to kiss that way, too. And it's all right. It's easy to fall asleep while praying in bed, and some fe people feel guilty about that. What a terrible way to pray, they say. <sighs> Turn that around and say, what a wonderful way to drop off to sleep. Going to Talking to your imaginary friend and then going off into dreamland where prayers are answered. Should you pray out loud or just in your mind? Either way is okay. Do what you're most comfortable with. Most people pray both ways from time to time, depending on the situation. They swing both ways. Some people feel troubled because their minds tend to wander while they're praying. This actually happens to everyone who prays more than a short prayer. So do it in haiku form or pretend it's a telegraph message and you're paying by the letter. Ask yourself, does the conversation ever wander when I'm talking to my friends? Well, I can see them can touch them. They're really there. <laughs> of course it does. And usually one of your 
uh, one of you will bring the conversation back around. But God can't do that. He can't seem to do much of anything. Yeah, he's invisible, too. And mute. It's the same... Uh, it's the same when you pray. Just bring your conversation with God back around. You just got to do all the heavy lifting because he's not going to do shit, including answer your prayer because it's probably against his will. When to pray. Very important. There's obviously no right time to pray, so there's your answer. However, just as we usually eat at certain times of the day, so it's a good idea to set aside a particular time each day to pray. Unless you're a Muslim and you got to do it, I forgot how many times, a lot. And on schedule. Regimented. Many people find that the best time is early in the morning before the day's other activities take over. However, this reason is purely practical. Another time may work best for you. A good time to pray is when you're doing other things that don't require mental concentration. For example, driving is pretty much an automatic activity. And usually, we don't hesitate to carry on a very animated, on very animated conversations when friends are along. So make God your friend when you're driving alone. Think of him as riding in the passenger seat beside you and talk to him. I got a great idea. Let Jesus take the wheel. You've got faith, right? I mean, it'll, faith moves mountains, just a mustard seed's worth. Let Jesus take the wheel. I mean, you're already risking everybody's lives because you could be raptured at any minute while you're driving a car and crash into a school full of unsaved children. Not good. All right. Most of us face uh, most of us face minor crises from time to time. Something happens that momentarily makes us angry or pushes one of our anxiety buttons. These are good times to send up a quick prayer for guidance. It's going up, you know. So it's got a direction. Even. When you're concentrating on other things, you can break in with a short prayer. It's like a commercial break. <laughs> Thanking God for the little things that happen in your life is one good way to do that. God, I appreciate the compliment my boss gave me. Thanks. Because <laughs> you made that happen. Hmm. He gets the credit, never the blame. Um, thanks for the air conditioning on this hot day. Because we all know God created air conditioning. Thanks for the apples I just enjoyed. Thanks for the BJ. Right, I guess you can't do that one. Okay. Uh, getting started. If you haven't been accustomed to talking to God, then getting to know him as a friend will be like getting acquainted with a with any new friend. <laughs> Introduce yourself. Start by saying, "God, I don't know I don't know you, but I've just decided that I'd like to." <laughs> Let's do lunch. You can say the words out loud or in your mind. Then, as you would with any new friend, tell God about the people in your family, where you work, 
and where you live, even though he knows everything already. <laughs> Tell God your problems. He knows those too. Are you sure you're not boring the shit out of God? He's already seen all this. <laughs> no wonder he never responds. I already know! Shut the fuck up, you little whining biatches! <laughs> Bunch of gnats. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, if you're coming to God for the first time, chances are it's because of a problem in your life. So describe the problem the way you would to any friend with magical powers and invisibility. Tell him you don't know the answer, but you're asking him to guide you to whatever is right for you. Then let go of your expectations and see how he works out the situation. I do the same trick except without God. I go, all right, I can't find my car keys, so I'm going to, all right, you know what? I'm going to stop thinking about my car keys. And I'm going to focus on some. Ah, that is where my car keys are. I guess it was God all along, huh? All right. Thank God. Finish by thanking God for hearing you and for bringing the right answer at the right time, like where your car keys were. Soon you'll discover that God is your friend, too. Your personal exclusive friend that the whole world can play with. What to pray for. There's no limit to the things you can pray about. You can pray in one hand and crap in the other. See which one fills up first. <laughs> what are your needs? Ask God to provide them at the time and in the way he sees best. Isn't that convenient? You can also pray for your wants, things you'd like to have but could live without, and probably will have to, if all you're doing is praying. Certainly, you'll want to talk to God about your problems, and it's important to pray for a, uh, for a willingness to accept whatever comes, because it's going to, in spite of your prayers. We all have definite ideas about what we want, and we work to accomplish those goals. That's what it's about. <laughs> yeah, pray and then go make it happen yourself. And then give God credit and thank Him for all you did for yourself. <sighs> Many of our cries are the result of our expectations and desires going unfulfilled. No duh. That's why the first sentence of the serenity prayer is so important. God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, because you can't do shit about <sighs> Think of the important people in your life, family members, neighbors, and work associates. Ask God to bless them spiritually. Your important people can even in include those who are hard to get along with. Or not. Uh, especially ask God to give you the wisdom to relate to them a appropriately. Like what, an AK-47? I mean, people get different answers since they're coming from their own heads. <sighs> Do you find yourself yielding to a particular temptation and then feeling guilty? Two prayers are important here. First, ask God to forgive you. He will. And second, Ask for the wisdom to overcome the bad habit. It's also a good idea to ask God to change you 
on the inside so you won't even want to yield. God really is your friend, even if you're afraid of him. Even if you don't believe in him, he still likes you. <laughs> so does Santa. <sighs> if you haven't talked to him before, try the suggestions on the sidebar across from page one. God will be glad to hear from you. <sighs> About this pocket signs. We hope you enjoyed reading this pocket signs article, which was adapted from the Signs of the Times, a 32 page monthly journal published by Seventh day Adventists. Articles, uh, article topics include salvation, prophecy, biblical teachings, and Christian lifestyle and other nonsense. <sighs> Each issue also includes several inspirational stories that are probably bullshit. Um, to learn about additional topics in the series of Pocket Signs articles, you can visit our website, and I'll put that information where it goes. I don't know where they can put it. Um, for more information about the monthly Signs for the Times magazine, you can subscribe and call this number that I'll give you. I don't know. Maybe it costs something. I don't know. Uh, learn more about the Bible if you want to be a seven-day Adventist and ruin a perfectly good Saturday. Uh, it's easy to learn more about the Bible alone in the quietness of your home to request your free Discover Home Bible study plan call the number I'm going to give you guys. And that's it for this fascinating little infomercial here for God. Uh, I hope this helped. Let me know if this changed your life, if it turned it around, or just turned your stomach. Um, peace the fuck out. Have a wonderful, whatever the fuck it is you're having. And I think I'm going to go to bed now.